uh, as Tex just said, I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of the background on how we, we formed this group back in, in Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, we are from DC664, that's the area code for Tijuana. And uh, next slide, please. Okay, so a little bit about myself is, well, my name is, my real name is Juan. I'm the co-founder of this group along with my other partner. He wasn't able to make it to this uh, little session, but we both started working together on, on what I'm going to present to you guys. And we both decided to, to start this group. I've worked everything from help desk to uh, security or intelligence consulting for the government here in Mexico. And well, I think that's pretty much the only relevant thing uh, about me for now, right? If you ever come down to Tijuana, feel free to give us a call or send us an email and we'll set you up with a couple of you know, cool places to drink once this COVID thing is, is over. Um, next slide. Okay. So the uh, purpose of this, of uh, this, uh, presentation or this small talk is just to give you uh, an outline of, of three things, right? Like, why did we go into surveillance? Uh, what we did and well, what went wrong? Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so why surveillance? Uh, next slide. Okay, so we thought that we wanted to make a difference, right? But we didn't want to do it the stupid way. So we didn't want to get really uh, like involved on anything that had to do with, with narcos or with, uh, I don't know, like human trafficking. We wanted to start with something, let's say simple. So uh, one of the states here in Mexico had a problem with, with uh, foreign uh, criminal bands coming overseas and smuggling sea cucumbers. And we thought, well, that's, you know, like simple enough. We might get that working. And what we had to do was really simple, right? We had to find the government official that was working with that state government. And that was also an inside man for that criminal organization. We just had to find out who it was. And it, it should have been like real simple. Uh, the thing was that we could not use either hacking team system or FinFisher system because uh, I'm speaking of something that happened at around 2015, right? So that's around the FinFisher and hacking team leaks. So we were limited on, on that end. So we had to develop something new. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so what we had for that was that we had uh, one higher, high up personnel, like let's say a manager for the IT department inside the government. We had also one person for field operations who was ex-military. And we also had a house, just an abandoned house that no one really knew about. And we also had a fake phone repair joint that was set up. Uh, the other thing that we had was a pen tester. That was, that was really me and my partner who co-founded this DEFCON group, who used to work for the federal government uh, operating the uh, hacking teams platform, the RCS platform. Uh, the other thing that we had for our advantage was that hacking teams has just got hacked themselves. So we had all the source code and demos and documentation on, on WikiLeaks that we can consult on. Uh, next slide, please. Yep. But what we didn't have was money, right? So this was just a small kind of black ops operation. It was really just about 10 people that, that were in on it due to the uh, governor's orders per se. But there wasn't really any like big budget, right? Because uh, the former two programs with Finn Fisher and hacking team had just been burned. So uh, next slide, 
please. Okay, here's what we did. Next slide. Um, we went through all the hacking team leaked information on, on WikiLeaks, and we went through a ton of, of DEF CON videos on, on YouTube. The other thing that we had to do was drink a lot because we usually met at bars and we slept very little because it was you know just overnight everything we we did was just working overnight and we had enough budget just to work uh, on buying some tough books two of them and two sets of um, omnidirectional antennas and some alpha adapters um, next slide please Okay, so the tools that we worked on are, are these, these are the main ones. I mean, everything is, just works great. Um, I, mean, I haven't used them in a while, but uh, this, this was what we were using back in 2015, 2016. So it was pretty much um, Byte Bleeders in the Middle Framework. We used uh, Backdoor Factory from um, Joshua Pitts. We used Platypus for uh, generating uh, some backdoor applications for Mac OS. We also used the browser exploitation framework and cat um, at exploit because it just made control and uh, command and control easier. And we also used Fluxian for uh, gaining access into into uh, the wireless networks, right? Whenever needed, because it, it wasn't really uh, that necessary since we already had someone working on the inside of, of the government's network. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, okay. So what we did was we worked on four, profit, four uh, phases, right? We had uh, phase one, we had to gain access to the network. That was easy, we already had someone in there. If not, then we can use Fluxion. Then we would use uh, just Menon in the middle framework to just to intercept their uh, communications or their networking activities. Then we would just send out some payloads to infect their PCs. And then we would just go through all the information to see if anyone was, was communicating with, with non-government or with any foreign, foreign actor. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So the first thing that we did to gain access was using Fluxion. We used a uh, deauthentication de attack. So pretty much you know, knocking down the legit AP. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so after that, we would just gather the uh, handshake. And then what Fluxion helps you out with is that if you create a login page for one of the uh, local providers, in our case, uh, something like uh, companies called uh, Telnor, Telmex, Telcel, you know, just our local carriers, we, we did some legit login screens for that and we asked the users to input their, their WPA key and then validate it against what the handshakes we captured during the DOS attack. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> And after that, well, we just stopped the de -auth de authentication attack and we logged into the uh, legit AP. Uh, next slide, please. Then after that, uh, I'm going to, to leave you with a link. If in case these slides are shared, I can leave you with a link of the video uh, where we showcase how we modified some stuff on beef to send out, we basically what we did here was uh, drop SSL for the local newspapers, and then we would request the user to update uh, Chrome. We would send out infected HTA files, but if that failed, what we would do is uh, we would we we found a Google Chrome update website or a server that wasn't using the uh, HSTS. So what we did was using the uh, Backdoor Factory, we would request the user to go to the Chrome website that we found 
download it from there and just decrypt it and um, infect it on the on the back end and you can see that process in the video it was really simple once we got to automating the uh, beef part through javascript it was really working like wonderfully uh, and it I, I we couldn't believe that it was all like open source and uh, all the things that the community was putting out there it was just like really great um next slide please um the thing we did there was that we also set up some sort of uh, recognition so that if you were using if we recognized that you were using something like safari through beef then we would ask you to update your your flash player or anything adobe related because adobe wasn't using hsts at the time so we can just drop down the encryption and then do the same thing either infect it on the go or we would use platypus to serve uh, a backdoor osx uh, format application then again that's that's right there on, on our slide um, so what went wrong uh, uh, next next slide please uh, pretty much all of it I mean there was no follow through on the gathered information which was a lot we besides this we also intercepted uh, zip calls we used the uh, SSL export vulnerability from Chrome to gather their private keys and then load them up on, on Wireshark to decrypt the uh, the uh, traffic that we had caught over course of weeks or two weeks. But the thing was that it was a lot of information. The team was really small. There was really no follow through. Um, some target selection seemed that it was really personal and it wasn't really official. Like we, we, we couldn't see anything that would point us to the fact that maybe they were working with a foreign with a foreign actor and some targets were not government related as as they stipulated at the beginning right some were reporters or civilians or you know the house cleaning personnel like we we thought it wasn't getting the proper usage and that's why we decided to you know just kill everything off the thing was that this wasn't necessarily on, let's say, higher government's orders. It seemed more to be like a problem with their middle management, right? So the guys that hired us, though they were the ones that, that were doing this, this misuse of uh, all this information that we really worked hard on and that we were getting some great results. Next slide, please. And if we were to for flash forward two years, well, that same misuse of, of interception systems, well, it really came to shine on the news, right? They started working with, with NSO and they really started just blasting people with spam SMS. So again, you, you can see that they were tracking everyone, right? Like uh, presidential candidates, reporters, human rights people. Uh, it, it was, it was 